In this lesson, we're going to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations. This is a pretty mechanical process, and um, the math itself isn't too difficult, but it's very, very important that you remain organized while you're doing this and have some sort of process in doing it. What I like to do is I like to label each of my three equ equations as row 1, row 2, and row 3. And what I like to do for this particular system, I'm going to solve it by elimination. And I'm going to scan through my three rows and I'm going to ask myself which variable is going to be the easiest to cancel. And as I scan all three rows, I think that the Z's are looking pretty good. Um, particularly, if I take row one and row three and add them, the Z is going to cancel out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say off to the side, row one, plus row 3 and I'm going to be canceling out the Z's. And This is the notation that I use for that. In this way if I were to get it wrong and I were taking a quiz the grader might have some idea as to what I was actually going for. So row 1 is going to be X plus 2Y minus Z equals 1 and row 3 is 2x plus 6y plus z equals 8. Now, if I add these two rows together, the z's are going to go away. I'm going to get 3x plus 8y. The z's cancel, and I'm left with 9. Now, if I cancel out Z using rows 1 and rows 3, now I need to pick two other rows in which I can cancel out the Z. So I think I'm going to use row 1 and row 2. However, it's got to be twice row 1. So I think this is how I'm going to set it up. So over to the side, I'm going to say row 2 plus twice row 1. And again, I'm going to eliminate Z. Now, a lot of teachers don't use this little method right here, but I think it's a really great way to keep organized. So I'm going to start with row 2, which is X plus 3Y plus 2Z is equal to 7. And now I'm going to add to that twice row 1. So as I look at row 1, I'm going to double everything. So I'm going to get 2x plus 4y. Negative z doubled is negative 2z. And 1 doubled is 2. So everything in that row, that first row, got doubled. OK, and now I'm going to add. And when I do that, I get 3x plus 7y, the z's cancel out, and that equals 9. I'm going to take these two resulting equations that I got, I'm going to stack them one on top of the other. So in my first outcome, I have 3x plus 8y equals 9. My second outcome is 3x plus 7y and that equals 9. And I think the easiest thing to do here would be to subtract. So 3x minus 3x, that's going to cancel out. 8y minus 7y is y. 9 minus 9 is 0. So I have one of my three solutions. So 1 down, 2 to go. Now I'm going to back substitute into either one of these equations in x and y to solve for x. So I think I'm just going to plug that in here. So I've got 3x plus 7 times y equals 9. But now instead of y, I'm going to put 0 because that's what we figured y to be. So this is going to be 3x equals 9 and ultimately x equals 3. Two down, one to go. 
Now I'm going to take one of my initial rows that has x's, y's, and z's and solve for the missing variable, which in this case is z. It doesn't matter which equation I use, but I'm going to pick the one that's got the lowest coefficients so that the numbers are the easiest to work with. So I'm going to pick x plus 2y minus z is equal to 1. And now I'll plug in 3 plus 2 times 0 minus z is equal to 1, which gives us 3 minus z is equal to 1, or z equals 2. Now it's customary to express your answer as an ordered triple in alphabetical order. So in this case it will be x, y, z, or 3, 0, 2. So this is the solution for the 3 by 3 system. Okay, so my parting words to you would be just make sure you keep very, very organized and very neat because if you make a mistake in the beginning, you're going to be carrying that mistake throughout the entire problem and it's, it's just going to get worse and more compounded. So keep organized and try this notation that I've written here in red as a way to maintain your organization. In this lesson, we're going to take another look at an example of a 3 by 3 system of equations. In this problem, um, overall I think the uh, equations are a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to identify this as row 1, the middle row as row 2, and the final row as row 3. And what's going to happen here, unlike the first example, some of these equations I can solve right away. So if I look at row 1, for example, I can go right to it and I can solve it. If 5a is equal to 5, then a must equal 1. I'm already one-third of the way there. I've got one out of my three problems. Now, what would make the most sense next would be to plug into row 3. So plugging into row 3, I've got twice a plus 7c is equal to negative 5. a we just figured out to be 1. So now we've got 2 plus 7c is equal to negative 5. Subtracting 2 from both sides, 7c is equal to negative 7 and c is equal to negative 1. 2 down, 1 to go. So now let's go to row 2 and let's plug in what we know. Uh, 6b minus 3 times c is equal to 15. Now we just figured c out and c turned out to be negative 1. So now we have 6b plus 3 is equal to 15. Subtracting 3 from both sides we get 6b is equal to 12 and b is equal to 2. When you write your answer you want to use an ordered triple. That's the customary way of doing it and we generally like to keep it in alphabetical order. So in this case it would be a, b, c or 1, 2, negative 1. And we'll just finish by boxing in the answer. And that's it. In this lesson, I'm going to do a third example of solving a 3x3 three three system of equations. Again, I'm going to start by labeling each of the rows, row 1, row 2, and row 3. In doing this, I can just keep my work a little bit more organized. Now, what I notice first is that I've got three different variables, a u, a v, and a w. The u occurs twice, the v occurs twice, and the w occurs twice. So this one's a little bit, this one's a little bit different. 
um, I want to think of any way that I can to eliminate one of the variables. So what I'm focusing on right now are these W's. I've got a positive W and a negative W. So what I think I'm going to do is simply take row 2 and add it to row 3. And I think if I do this, I'm going to end up eliminating the W. So I think that's my first move. And I'm sort of documenting that with this notation here. So we have 3V plus W is equal to negative 3. That's my row 2. Now my row 3 is 4U minus W. And that equals 2. So if I add right now, the W's cancel out, and I'm left with 3V plus 4U is equal to negative 1. So I'm left with an equation in both V and U. Now if I look at the top row, which I haven't worked with yet, that's also in V and U. It's, it's written backwards in U and V, but that doesn't matter. We can switch the order. So I'm going to take row 1, and I'm going to reverse the order. So this becomes negative 3V plus 2u is equal to 13. Okay, so if I add now, the v's cancel out, and I'm left with 6u is equal to 12. So u is equal to 2. So let's back substitute and solve for another variable. Um, why don't I go here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing up here and I'm going to plug into that. So I get 2u minus 3v is equal to 13. And I found u to be 2. So 4 minus 3v is equal to 13. Minus 3v is equal to 9, and v is equal to negative 3. Two down, one to go. All right, so I've got to find an equation that has a w in it, because I haven't used that yet. So I'm going to use row, row 2. Crazy with the arrows here. Um, 3v plus w is equal to negative 3. Now in this case, v is negative 3. So we get negative 9 plus w is equal to negative 3. Adding 9 to both sides, w is equal to 6. Again, it's customary to write your answer as an ordered triple in alphabetical order. So we've got u, v, w, or 2, negative 3, 6. So let's put a box around that. And there's your answer. This is the uh, solution that will satisfy the original 3x3 three three system of equations.